for this talk, we build from scratch the character table for S4, symmetric group on four letters. And we'll use that table to get the character table for A4, the alternating group on four letters. Then we'll have an application for tensor products. Recall, you can realize S4 as symmetries of a regular tetrahedron. If I want to consider group elements, we can represent them in cycle notation. Now, in cycle notation, the conjugacy classes of an element are just going to be given by the cycle structure of that element. If we want to count elements, for the identity element, we have one element in this conjugacy class. For two cycles, we have four times three, two ways to write that element. So we have six elements in the conjugacy class. For three cycles, we have four times three times two, divided by three ways to write that element. Gives us eight elements in the conjugacy class. For four cycles, four factorial divided by four gives us six. And then for disjoint two cycles, we have four factorial divided by two, divided by two. And then we can switch these so I divide by another two to give us three elements of this type. If we add, we get 24 elements, and that agrees with the combinatorics for a regular tetrahedron. If I want the character table of S4, let's review basics of representation theory for finite groups. So if pi v is a representation of g, the number of irreducible representations of g up to equivalence is equal to the number of conjugacy classes in G. In our case, we've just seen that's equal to 5. For the character of our representation, okay, so we're just going to evaluate a G, that's given by the trace of pi of G. If we evaluate the identity, then we're taking the trace of an identity transformation, which is going to give us the dimension of our vector space, and we'll call that d sub pi. If pi is irreducible, then d sub pi divides the order of the group. And if we take the sum over a set of inequivalent irreducible representations, sum of d pi squared is equal to the order of the group. Finally, we have short orthogonality relations for characters. If pi and sigma are irreducible representations, if we compute this term here, we get a 1 if pi and sigma are equivalent, and a 0 otherwise. With these facts, we're able to narrow down the character table for S4 pretty quickly. We're looking for five irreducible characters. We'll set up our character table as follows. We have a row for each irreducible representation. Each column corresponds to a conjugacy class. Because characters are constant on these classes, we'll weight each column with the number of elements in the class. By short orthogonality, if we take the weighted sum of the squares in any row, we expect to get 24, the number of elements in the group. Okay, if we divide by 24, we get 1. If we multiply any two rows together, take the weighted sum, we expect to get 0. Now, since we're working in S4, we get two irreducible representations for free. We have the trivial representation and the sign representation. Because these representations are one-dimensional, the representation is equal to its character. So for the trivial representation, we just have a row of ones. For the sign representation, we have a row of ones, except for the two cycles and four cycles, where we get a minus one. Now, if we take the weighted sum of the squares of the entries. We're going to get 24 in each case. If we multiply the first two rows together, take the weighted sum, we get 1 plus 8 plus 3 minus 6 minus 6 gives us 0. So sure orthogonality checks out. If we're looking for another irreducible representation of S4, I can consider the regular tetrahedron centered at the origin in R3. And then the symmetries of this tetrahedron are going to induce linear transformations in R3. So we'll call this a standard representation. Now, for the identity element, we're just going to have the identity transformation. 
We have a three-dimensional vector space, so the trace is equal to three. If I take a two cycle, so we'll orient our tetrahedron as follows. Okay, note, positive x-axis points out of the board, positive y-axis points to the right, positive z-axis points up. So this transposition here is just gonna send x to minus x, y to y, and z to z. So with respect to the standard basis, our matrix is minus one, one, one. If I take the trace, we get a one. For our three cycles, so let's try one, two, three. Okay, I'll use the same orientation. In this case, the z-axis is gonna be fixed. Okay, we're just gonna do a rotation by two pi thirds. So with respect to our standard basis, one, two, three is gonna act by this matrix here. So if we take the trace, we're gonna get zero. For one, two, three, four, now if I'm taking the trace, we'll get the same answer no matter how we change basis. So I'm gonna reorient our tetrahedron so that it looks like this. Now, if we consider a product of disjoint two cycles, so of one, two, and three, four, what's happening here? When we switch one and two, we're sending x to minus x. Switching three and four is gonna send z to minus z, and then y is gonna stay where it is. So, we're looking at the matrix minus one, one, minus one, and if I take the trace, we get a minus one. Finally, we have our four cycles, one, two, three, four. These are a little bit difficult to think about. So instead of considering the tetrahedron for the picture, let's just consider two adjacent triangles as so. So what happens? When we apply one, two, three, four, we're sending this picture to this picture here. If I wanna make sense of this as a linear transformation, we'll note, if I take the four points that are the midpoints of these four segments, that's gonna span a plane. In that plane, we're just gonna rotate by pi halves. Then you'll note in the perpendicular direction, we're just gonna be multiplying by a minus one. So that means we can find a basis where we're using this matrix here. I have a rotation by 90 degrees, then a multiplication by minus one. If we take the trace, we get a minus one. That completes our third row. Okay, I'll leave it to you to check that the weighted sum of squares adds up to 24, and that we have orthogonality to the first two rows for an approach with less geometry, but more linear algebra. Let's consider the permutation representation on C4. We have the basis E1, E2, E3, and E4, standard basis. We let permutations act on our basis vectors by having the permutation act on the label. Then we extend linearly. Here, our permutations are gonna preserve the tetrahedron in C4 formed by having its vertices at our standard basis vectors. So we expect to have the standard representation appearing in here. For our matrices, with respect to the standard basis, we're gonna have permutation matrices. So that means there's zero everywhere except for a one in each row and column. We take traces, we get values of our characters at each group element. Now, if we take the weighted sum of the squares, divide by the order of the group, we get a two. And the way I interpret this, this is the sum of the squares of the multiplicities of the irreducible characters in our character chi. So I can only write two as a sum of squares as one squared plus one squared. So our chi is gonna be written as a sum of two distinct irreducible characters. Now, one we'll get by observation, the trivial sub-representation. If we take the sum of E1, E2, E3, and E4, it's gonna span a trivial representation. So if we let permutation act on these labels, it's just gonna carry the one, two, three, four back to itself. So we're just multiplying by a one here. That means our chi is equal to something plus a trivial representation 
if we take our chi, so it's gonna be four, two, one, zero, zero. Subtract off a trivial representation, we get three, one, zero, minus one, minus one. And there's our standard representation. Note we interpret this as saying our permutation representation can be written as a direct sum of a standard representation plus a trivial representation. To find another irreducible character, we consider quotients by normal subgroups. Specifically, I want to take the conjugacy class of products of disjoint two cycles and put it with the identity element. That gives us a normal subgroup of order four. So the quotient group has six elements, and we can see by either checking that it's not abelian or that it has no element of order six, must be isomorphic to S3, the symmetric group on three letters. To see this directly with the tetrahedron, if we take opposite sides, join the midpoints, we're gonna get three segments. If I take any symmetry of the tetrahedron, these three segments get mapped back into each other. So that's how we see an S3 here. If we consider irreducible representations of S3, we already have two of them. We're gonna have the trivial and the sine representation. What we don't have is the two-dimensional representation that's irreducible. Now, we realize this on R2, so I'm gonna take an equilateral triangle centered at the origin, the symmetries induce linear transformations on the plane, and then we extend the C2. For representations of quotient groups, okay, we note this is gonna be constant on our cosets. So, that'll hold for our characters also. So if we evaluate the identity, we get the same value as we would at products of disjoint two cycles. At the identity, we just get the dimension, so that's gonna be equal to two. For our two cycles, they're gonna be in the same coset as the four cycles. We note here, for symmetries of our triangle, we're just getting a reflection, so the trace is gonna be equal to zero. Finally, we're gonna have our three cycles, and these are gonna be rotations by two pi thirds, and we've seen that that gives us a trace of minus one. Now, if we take the weighted sum of the squares, we divide by 24, we get a one, so we have an irreducible character. Now, I'll leave it to you to check orthogonality with the first three rows. For the last irreducible character, we note the dimension of its representation is equal to three. If I take the sum of the squares of the dimensions in the first column, that has to be equal to 24, so I have only room for a three here. Now, if I'm looking for an irreducible three-dimensional representation, I could try to create something new off of our standard representation here. We could do that by multiplying by one-dimensional representations. Now, if we do this multiplication, the character of the new representation is just the product of the characters. So if we multiply sine by standard, we're gonna get something new. Now, we could also try this with our two-dimensional representation, but the minus ones are lined up with the zeros, so nothing new comes out. For our last row, we could check the orthogonality relations, and we see we have an irreducible character, so that completes the table. Now, we can consider, what about the character table for A4? So we first sort out the conjugacy classes. We'll have four of these. So the identity element, our three cycles are gonna split into two classes. Then the product of disjoint two cycles, is gonna to stay together. So we're gonna have four conjugacy classes, which means four irreducible representations. First thing we should try to do, take the representations for S4 and restrict. Now, we always have the trivial representation. For the sign representation, when we restrict A4, we just get the trivial representation. So nothing comes out of that. If we restrict the standard representation, okay, we're gonna remove these two columns. Okay, we get this. And then we can check that this is an irreducible character for A4, 
So that's going to be our second representation. Now we note if we're taking sums of squares, I have 9 plus 1 is 10. We need two more representations, so they're each going to have to be one dimensional. Now, if I check our two dimensional representation here, we do our weighted sum of squares, divide by 12, we get a 2. So that says the two dimensional representation is going to break into two pieces when we restrict to A4. Now, how do we figure out what happens here? Well, if we consider our normal subgroup from before, it's going to be a subgroup of A4, and it's still normal. So we take the quotient, we now get a Z mod 3. So we can consider irreducible representations for Z mod 3, and we get those using a third root of unity. Okay, so as so. So we note these have to be equal to 1 here because these are in the normal subgroup. Then these are our other possibilities. Now, we should check that we have our orthogonality relations here. So for that, you're actually going to need to use the complex conjugation. So here we have a character table where not all the entries are real. We'll also need for our orthogonality relations that 1 plus our omega plus omega squared is equal to 0. And that's because we have a third root of unity. We finish with an application. So we're in S4. I want to use irreducible characters to decompose the tensor product of standard representation with itself as a direct sum of a trivial, a standard, a two-dimensional, and a sign tensored with a standard. On this side, we have three times three dimensions. On this side, we have 1 plus 3 plus 2 plus 3 dimensions. So this seems like a reasonable answer. To proceed, if we have any representation of S4, by full reducibility, we can decompose it into a direct sum of irreducibles, possibly with multiplicities. Then, if I take the character, the character can be written as a sum of the multiplicities times the irreducible characters. Now, if we want to extract the multiplicities, we just use short orthogonality. So the idea is going to be, I'm just going to compute this item here. We'll also need, if I take a tensor product of two representations, then the character of this new representation is just given by the product of the characters. So if I take tensor product of a standard with itself, we take its character, we get the character for the standard squared. So we're just going to take entries in the third row and square them. So we have a 9, 1, 0, 1, 1. We apply a recipe for the multiplicities. So we have to work out five of these terms. And we know what comes out. Okay, for the trivial, we get a 1. For the sign, I get a zero. For the standard, we get a one. For the two-dimensional, we get a one. And for the sign tensor with the standard, we get a one. And that agrees with our result here.